Good evening, everyone. I run a brick and mortar company. So I wonder what many of you must be wondering what I'm doing here. What is uh, an airport guy talking about innovation? I was very conscious about the fact when I was coming in to speak here today that uh, I'm going to be probably in a room full of tech guys, and I don't even speak your language. And I was, uh, I, I stayed clear. I decided not to speak of technology at all. I just thought I'll share with you some of the things that we do in our business uh, that's shaping uh, uh, the future of airports in India. So, like I said, uh, airports and uh, technology or innovation really don't go hand in hand. And, uh, and it's for obvious reasons, because airports are monopolies, and monopolies are normally characterized by um, indolence, by complacence. But however, despite that, airports in India have been hot, fertile hotbeds of innovation for the last few years, and some uh, fantastic work has been done, and uh, airports in India have particularly been uh, recognized globally for the, some of the innovative practices that have helped and is still helping to transform the industry. Um, you know, airports are not the best places where you want to spend time. So about four years back, we were expanding our uh, existing terminal. Many of you must have noticed, those who have traveled to Bangalore Airport, we've just expanded our terminal. So we decided to reach out and ask the passengers, ask the people of Bangalore, what would you like to see at our airport? That's the best way to get uh, the functional features of your airport instead of hiring a consultant, which is far more expensive. So we reached out to them through an innovative social media campaign called uh, smilebengaluru.com. We got thousands of feedback, really plenty. And almost all of them, 100%, focused on demanding luxurious facilities and amenities that uh, are meant to entertain you, engage you, uh, uh, you know, uh, amuse you while you spend lots of time at the airport. Uh, things like shopping malls, things like spas, swimming pools, golf simulators, gaming parlors. This is almost all. I, I know I'm dramatic, but I don't need this. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. Um, so all of, all of the feedback that came was actually about um, having features like that. And the question I'd like to pose here is today, why is it that you'd like to spend so much time at airports that you need these kind of facilities like movie halls and spas? Is that really what you want to do, spend time at airports? I can't remember for the life of me a single feedback that came in saying, hey guys, I stand in line three times at an airport. Why can't I stand in line once and you just take care of the whole thing? Why is it that I um, have to uh, wait for 15 minutes for baggage? Why is it that I can't land and get out of the airport in 10 minutes flat? Can you make sure that happens? Uh, why is it that I have to carry multiple documents? I'm always a nervous wreck when I'm traveling because of the number of documents that I have to carry. Can somebody simplify that for me? Actually, not one feedback to that effect. You know, airports have innovated now for the last five, six years, and they've done some fantastic work because they've sort of competed with each other to differentiate uh, in terms of the kind of uh, service they're providing by offering these fantastic services. But you know what really what they're doing? They're actually catering to needs of passengers who are spending more and more time at airports. If you look at it in a perverted way, they're actually catering to the inherent inefficiencies of the system. Right? You're spending more time at the airport, so what do you do? Let's keep them entertained. Right? So that's, that's what's been happening in airports. So that's precisely the kind of innovation I don't want to talk about today. I don't want to talk about the kind of facilities that we are adding on at the airport because these facilities assume a sense of entitlement over your time. At the other end of the spectrum, if you look at uh, many soothsayers, crystal ball gazers, have looked at the future of air travel and said the ultimate form of innovation in air travel is no travel at all, which means that you will sit in the confines of your private bedroom and have telepresence meetings and virtual experiences. At Bangalore Airport, uh, and me personally, I'm willing to be bet my last dollar that this prophecy will not come true. And the reason is because this goes against a fundamental human trait. Quest is a fundamental human trait. Human civilization has progressed 
on the basis of man's need to fulfill his need for quest. Right? And I'm, I'm absolutely sure that a man's need to explore, experience, touch, feel, search is not going to be replaced by a virtual experience. So I am of the, of the belief, the firm belief, and I think we had a discussion a little while back before we started the session with some of the people. I am of the firm belief that travel is here to stay and travel will continue, but will evolve. And travel will evolve along the four fundamental elements that it has traditionally evolved on, distance, time, safety, and comfort. If you look at how travel has evolved over the years from bullet cards of the Oh, this image has got crazily stretched. There's a bullet cart there in that corner, and that represents the jet engine. So if you look at how travel has evolved over the years, um, what's re really driven travel is these four elements. Travel has helped us to get, get farther, get there faster, in more comfort, and certainly with infinite more safety. Another curious feature that you will see has, if you look at how travel has evolved, is also the fact that it has made travel simpler for all of us. All this leads to simplicity. And if you look at how uh, simplicity has been delivered, as more and more simplicity in travel has been delivered, the systems required at the back end to deliver that simplicity have become far more complex. Right? So, even going forward, uh, simplification of travel will remain the cornerstone for innovation in air travel. Um, I believe that over the next few years, we're going to see that various agencies are going to come together um, with simplicity as the overriding objective. We will look at the movement of passengers, the way people travel, and that will lead to further integration within the ecosystem. And I think I'll come to a bit of that. All the stakeholders will come together to deliver a unified experience at the front end, which will seem seamless to the traveler, where he doesn't even know where uh, the role of one stakeholder begins and the other stakeholder ends. It will be seamless from the experience point of view, whereas in the back end, a very complex set of processes will be set into motion, which will integrate the roles or even the experiences which are currently interconnected and disparate. This I believe will continue to be the cornerstone of innovation. And I think with this fundamental change in the way travel will evolve, that's how airports will also innovate. Airport innovation will lead to airport and airport experience being seamlessly integrated into the overall travel experience. This is an overall thought. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to speak about three themes. The first theme has got nothing to do with technology, but I will still talk about it whether you guys are interested in it or not, because it's my pet subject. Because I think that's, that's the most important innovation that airports can do here. And the second two will have a little bit to do, to do with uh, technology. The first one is about uh, role of airports, the changing role of airports, and the kind of uh, the role that airports play in powering the economy of any region. Two, uh, I'm going to speak about how airport technology adoption has uh, simplified airport operations. And finally, how we're going to transform passenger experience with the adoption of technology. Airports cannot exist in silos and should not exist in, uh, exist in silos. Airports, on one hand, are the face and uh, the calling card of a city or a region. And on the other hand, they also are an integral part of the passenger experience, of the travel journey. And airports will have to strive to continue to maintain this interesting duality, where on one end, they will become reflect, they will reflect the ethos and the culture of that region. And on the other end, will strive to offer differentiated services for each and every, every airline. And you will see that in practice on both sides of the Indian subcontinent. We've got some fantastic examples, again, which we discussed uh, a, a little bit before the event started. Singapore, Dubai, some of these air... You know, traveling on Singapore Airlines through Singapore Airport into Singapore City is one single seamless experience. The reason why this seems like a single experience to you as a passenger is because these entities have actually worked together to align their efforts, to align their values, to kind of align 
uh, their objectives. And that's the reason why this seems like a, uh, 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 a seamless experience. And not only is the experience sim uh, seamless, the fact that they've been uh, able to align their objectives and efforts produces tremendous results for them. So if you actually go to look at it, Singapore and Dubai have absolutely no home market demand to speak. The, the domestic demand does not even exist. And yet both of them have become powerful uh, uh, global cities where people come together. On, on the basis of what? Let me give you a few statistics. I don't know how many of you read in the papers this morning. The Vistara board had declared this morning that 70% uh, based on their study, 70% of all international passengers from India go abroad on international airlines. If you take that down to South India, 80% of all passengers traveling internationally, long haul, hub over other international hubs, not a single Indian hub, 80% from South India. 85% of all passengers traveling from uh, Bangalore are traveling on international airlines. Does this happen in other countries? What happens in uh, Hong Kong? It's Cathay Dragon. What happens in Singapore? It's Singapore Airlines that carries 65 to 70% of the, this, this is a unique situation for our country where it's the international airlines that are carrying all these passengers. If you look at the total traffic from Bangalore to uh, Europe or to America, 47% hubs over India's national hub, which is Dubai. I think it's a matter of absolute, it's a national shame that actually Dubai is our national uh, hub, uh, or our biggest hub. I don't want to call it the national hub. It's our biggest hub. And I think true innovation is actually in being able to arrest this leakage, this national loss. And I think this requires transformational thinking of the order that we haven't experienced in the aviation industry before. It requires, I think, you, you spoke about changing employee mindsets when you spoke about people, but if changing mindsets of different stakeholders, some governmental, some non-governmental, some semi-governmental, to change the mindsets of all these people, to get them to work together, I think is probably going to be one of the most interesting challenges that we have to face, and that's, that's uh, um, one of the most interesting assignments that we have in Bangalore Airport uh, for the moment. We've started work. We've, we've, we've tried to align the government of Karnataka, all our stakeholders together, try and work on this project. I'm sure you read about the fact that when AirAsia came into uh, India, they actually set up their hub in Chennai. They announced it. They applied to DGCA and got permission to start their hub in Chennai. They actually also um, um, set up their office, fitted it out, and started functioning from that office in Chennai. But it's with the ability of, uh, with the leadership of the airport, we went and spoke to all the stakeholders, and together, including the government of Karnataka, we put together a compelling proposition that got AirAsia to shift their hub from Chennai to Bangalore. And when Tony Fernandez started, uh, his, uh, uh, started the flight and he came down to Bangalore Airport, he said on that day, it was music to my ears when he said, the day we can start operating international, I'm going to flood this market with international flights. I'm going to make Bangalore the biggest hub in, in India when we bring passengers from various parts of the country to Bangalore and connect them to international destinations. I think this is the kind of work that we need to do uh, so as to, as to prevent this huge loss that we're having to this uh, country. So that's about, like I said, it's got nothing to do with technology, but I think it's a, it's a very interesting uh, challenge that we have in airports today, and I thought it might be interesting for you to hear this as well. Um, Coming back to um, technology adoption, I think airports uh, in India and the world over have, uh, are, are now adopting te technology to simplify the way airports function. Uh, technology adoption has been a complete game changer. Traditionally, airports, and um, I have a colleague here from the airline business who knows that airports have had stakeholders always functioning in isolation. Uh, they are all seemingly working towards the same objective, which is passenger, customer satisfaction, on-time performance, safety, security. They all seem to have the same objectives, but they never used to even speak to each other till a few years back. I think Bangalore Airport was a sort of a, uh, a, a pathbreaker, a pioneer in, in, when it started, because it started first by bringing all these guys together into one room and said, now let's sit here and operate the airport from here. Let's sit together and talk to each other and operate the airport from here. Let's share information. We, created, we, we brought in a technology platform that integrated with the sort of systems that all these guys were operating and brought all that data together in a single platform. 
so as to provide all these guys a common overview of operations because all of them in isolation were just having a very narrow view of what they were doing and therefore the businesses weren't working well and airports were the mess that you saw them a few years back. The moment you put this together, I think people have a better view of what's happening in operations. Let me give you an example. For a, the most obvious and the most important, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, objective of an airport to make sure flights go on time, on time performance. For a flight to depart on time, let's say at 11.10 from Bangalore, it has to land at 10.13 in Bangalore. After it lands, it has to meet several milestones. For example, catering starting at the right time, crew arriving at the right time, gates closing at the right time, flight papers being finalized at the right time. Like that, there are about 20, 30 odd milestones that can be met in between that. And for the flight to arrive in Bangalore at 10.30, it must enter the flight information region at X time. For that, it must depart, for example, let's say at Bombay at 9 o'clock. And for it to depart at 9 o'clock at Bombay, it must push back in Bombay airport at 8.50, et cetera, et cetera. There's a set of about 30 odd milestones that lead, uh, and going back all the way till six o'clock in the morning when the flight plan is filed. So uh, there are huge, many number of milestones that can be tracked. So when you in connect to all the systems of all these stakeholders and you're able to bring all the data together, what happens is that data that was residing with various people actually has been brought onto one platform. And with that, we have a comprehensive view of what's happening real time in operations. Any of these milestones change, it gives immediately a signal to the respective guy to say, hey, why don't you change this because this might affect your operation. In the old system, I remember the HAL airport, um, peak hours were almost sacrosanct. 10 to 11 is peak hour. So all the security booths will be manned, everybody is ready, but the flight schedule has changed because the flights have got delayed. Only the airlines know it. The security guys didn't know it. So when, the, when, the, uh, when there were no flights operating, all the security booths were manned. And when the flights came in, they were all gone for breakfast. So you would have this huge pileup and that you can never get off. Uh, if you remember the HAL airport queues used to go out into the car park. So that's the kind of stuff that has, uh, and this of course is true in all cases, in, in all parts of the airport. I think technology is now measuring everything that we do, um, uh, bringing in data from uh, basically making everything speak and bringing all that onto a common platform being controlled from the nerve center of airport operations called the airport operations control center where we get all the stakeholders sit together and uh, operate. Of course, it's produced great results as well. Bangalore Airport has uh, got one of the best on-time performance records. We have an on-time performance of 90%. Um, it also brings about tremendous predictability of operations. W at our airport, what we do is we, we uh, publish, um, you know, in order for airlines to operate in a predictable manner, we publish schedules that tell you resources allocated to each one of your flights for the next six months. So you can actually say 9W821 on 25th of January will operate from this gate, will board from this uh, particular gate, will stand, at, will, will be parked at this particular stand, belts will be delivered at this particular belt, and will be checked in at so-and-so counter. This information is known six months in advance. And this kind of improves also the predictability with which airlines can function. Um, coming back to passenger experience, the last part. I think this is probably something that's close to all of your hearts because that's uh, something all of you experience on a regular basis. The fact that I think travel is one of the most stressful uh, things that one can encounter. The multiple documents that you have to deal with, the multiple agencies that you have to uh, deal with, the number of processes that you have, the number of intermediaries that, that you have to handle, it's just so much that, that it, it sometimes numbs your mind and it, it actually sometimes scares you. And I've met a lot of seasoned travelers who are on the previous day of travel, a little nervous about whether they have carried everything in, and, and that's the case with me as well. I also get nervous when I'm traveling through a foreign airport, whether I've carried everything, whether I've done everything right. Uh, it's always a case. If you look at the way you travel today, your journey is from point A to point B. But actually, the way you experience it is actually a series of interconnected and disparate experiences strung together in a staccato manner. So take a look at it. You have, when you leave, you have the cab company to deal with. You have to book a cab. Then there's a taxi ride to the airport which is not connected to any other part of your journey. You have multiple agencies to deal with. You have the security guy, you have the parking guy, and you have the formidable CISF that you have to deal with when you enter the airport, right? And then you have uh, the airline guys who are checking you in. Then there is the immigration guy. There is you know, multiple agencies, multiple processes that you have to 
uh, deal with. I think technology is actually going to come into play by stringing all this together. Make sure there is seamlessness in the way we travel. I'll give you another example of what we have done uh, at, at, at uh, Bangalore to try and uh, change this a little bit. So today, let's, you're, let's say you're traveling from Delhi to Mysore, and for which you have to come to Bangalore airport in any case. So you come to Bangalore airport, and the whole journey is about taking a taxi from your house till the airport, then flight to Bangalore, blah, blah. And once you come to Bangalore to go to Mysore, you have to take a taxi or a cab all the way to the city. Then you've got to figure out, what do I do? I, I need to uh, probably stay on in a cafe or in a lodge or in a hotel for a few hours till my bus leaves, and then take the bus to Mysore. And we said, how can we string all this together that the passenger has a, has a smooth experience? So we spoke to KSRTC, which to my mind is one of the uh, more forward-looking and smart uh, uh, government-owned uh, transport companies. So we sat down with them and said, hey, listen, how can we sort of replicate the flight experience on ground? So together, we designed uh, what's known as Flybus, a service that operates between Bangalore and Mysore for now, and is soon going to be expanded to Mangalore. I think Mangalore's also got launched. Pondicherry, Tir Tirupati, et cetera, et cetera, to nearby towns. So what really happens is Flybus is a, is a fantastic bus. Uh, Volvo designed it for us uh, with luxurious seats that sort of mimic the kind of experience that you have on, on the flight. They have even an individual screen for in-bus entertainment. You even have um, food service, a snack served to you while you're traveling to Mysore, and you even have a toilet on the bus. Um, the idea was to sort of, uh, you know, um, mimic the kind of experience that you will have on, on, on board so that there is that seamlessness brought in. The idea also, of course, it's got stuck due to some legal issues. Um, in fact, Jet uh, Airways was our partner in that. And we, what, what we wanted to do was even try and combine the whole ticketing process through technology. And that's where technology comes in. We're still working. We're not given a Belson. We're still working on that. We're trying to get uh, Jet Airways and um, uh, KSRTC to agree on, on, a, uh, on a single ticketing. So when you book in Delhi, you book a single ticket. When you check in, you get two boarding passes, much like the way you would if you're tra uh, traveling on Air France and transiting over Paris to go to US, you will get two boarding passes. One first boarding pass for the flight, second one for the bus. And uh, as you arrive in Bangalore, you will get a lounge where you can be seated. The on-ground process, the airport integrates the whole thing, where you don't have to bother with your bag. The bag gets picked up from the flight and loaded directly onto the bus. You go out and shop, do a little bit of uh, a fun time. And then in time, you will be given a boarding time, land up at the bus at that point of time. So that brings about complete integration. And once, once technology is used as the basis, and I, we're working with ThoughtWorks uh, precisely on this issue, how we can create a platform where you can string the entire experience together, right from taxi to the whole thing, from um, right till, till the end point. And uh, find, uh, uh, second point is about what happens with the entire procedure that you have to deal with the, at the airport. Can we do something about that? And I think there's rapid changes happening there as well. Today, already when you book a ticket, um, you straight away get a boarding pass, right? And some of the airlines, you're already just getting a boarding pass straight away. There is no ticket. I think check-in as a concept will di disappear in five years. It's just going to go away. Not five years. Maybe I'm, I'm taking too long a time window. Maybe even earlier. Check-in as a process will disappear. Airlines will give you plastic tags that you can hang on to your bags. You print your baggage tag at home and inserted that into the tag. Your baggage is also tagged. So in two to three years from now, I think all passengers will arrive at airports pre-checked in, pre-baggage tagged. So all you need to know as you come into the airport is drop your bag off at some running carousel. Before you start smiling that you can get away with excess baggage, no, you will not. I, I see you smiling there. We'll catch you. There'll be, there'll be processes in place to make sure that you pay your excess baggage as well. So um, the pre-tagged bags can get dropped off and the, tags, uh, the bags go back into the carousel system. And um, the next question is the first question that I raised earlier. Can we just pro be processed? And imagine that you're walking through uh, a detector, a full body scanner. And as you do that, you have a little device, a, a little card. That card then becomes your identity card. It has your biometric details. It has your e, e um, passport. It's got your e visa. It's got your ticket. It's got your boarding pass. It's got your baggage tag. Everything on it. It's even your wallet, e wallet. And that card also can double up as the room key when you reach your destination. So it's a single card that, that doubles up for everything. So this card is scanned, 
and you give your biometric identity, the biometric, is, uh, the biometric details are, uh, are sort of matched with the details on your passport and your visa. You're cleared, so you clear immigration and security in one shot without human contact, right? So the whole thing is completed in a, in, in a jiffy, and then you go and do what we love you to do, which is shopping, right? Or go and eat at some of the restaurants and stuff like that. So that's, that's the kind of stuff uh, that we're working uh, with uh, ThoughtWorks, and we're hopeful that we should be able to introduce some of these things uh, in the months and years to come. And of course, the whole thing about customer experience. Uh, today, we have uh, many elements of customer experience thrust in front of your face as you walk through the airport and you really have to stumble over them as you walk through. Instead, what we'd like to do is provide you with service the way you want it, on demand. Um, what we'd like to do is introduce experiences like if you're leaving the house and you're taking, taking an early morning flight, you should be able to order your idli from the Malgudi Tiffin Center to be ready at 7 o'clock when you arrive at the airport. And as you drive into the airport, Malgudi Tiffin Center gets a, gets a message that, hey, Hari has just entered the airport now. Considering the current traffic situation inside the airport and the current queue and security lineup, he should be there in your outlet in 23 minutes, right? And then at every stage, it tells Malgudi Tiffin Center where Hari is and that Hari should be reaching now. You've already paid for it as you, paid the, you place the order. And as you walk in, somebody walks up to you and says, that's your Ridley. So, you know, that's the sort of stuff that we're also uh, trying to uh, transform the entire passenger experience with. So does that mean that uh, airports will be cold, sterile places where you get processed one, very quickly, where you don't spend any time at all? No, I don't think so. Because I think airports, we're still in a, in a consumption and a, um, uh, entertainment economy. And I think it's the, 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 the key issue is that uh, all these luxurious facilities and amenities must not be there because they are an excuse for what you have not been able to do, but they should be available as a choice that the customer makes. That's, that's the way we view how airports should function in the future. And I think the, the key message here is that from the operational point of view, the entire aspect of travel innovation will be focused on trying to keep things, uh, things brutally simple. I think simple has got disappeared into the why. That's, I don't know how that's happened, but to try and keep things brutally uh, simple. Because as uh, Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication. Thank you very much.